Motion Picture Notion. I'm your host, Gabriel Burton. Uh, it's been a while since I've done any episodes of this. Uh, that's because my phone broke. I don't want to get into it. It was kind of a piece of crap. But anyways, I've got a new one, so uh, that's why there was the hiatus between episodes. Anyways, um, for this particular episode, I wanted to focus a little bit more in depth on something that I've already covered, which is the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 1990. I've been doing things like Franchise Fridays and Trilogy Tuesdays. I think I'm going to stop with that because in all God's honesty, like trying to cram like three to five movies in a 10 minute video just really doesn't do it justice. You know, if you really want to go like in depth and cover something like the way that it really deserves to be acknowledged, whether good or bad, you really need to like go one movie at a time. So anyways, that's what I'm doing now. So. Um, I recently had a visit to Walmart, and uh, they have a bargain bin of Blu-rays, and I like to like buy the Blu-rays and then download the digital code to my Voodoo, and then you know I don't know give the Blu-rays to friends, or if they're like a little bit you know if they're like newer Blu-rays, I'll just sell them back to Fye or whatever. Regardless of this, I recently bought all three of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies. They also have TMNT from 2007, which is the unofficial fourth sequel. I'll be getting that, but that really wasn't from my childhood. For this video, I want to focus on the original one, because I literally just finished watching it, and I have to say, like, this is a really good movie. I think that it's appalling that this movie only has a 40% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. That to me is disgusting. Even if you look at the turtles themselves, okay, and like the way that they were executed, the way that they nailed all the characters, except arguably Donatello, okay, Corey Feldman as Donatello, they could have picked somebody better. Actually, the person that they picked for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 was a little bit better as Donatello because he sounded more like a dork and, you know, like a nerdly type of person. But you know what? It's something that I'm prepared to overlook because they still acknowledge in this movie that Donatello is the smart one. But... They represented the characters of the Ninja Turtles pretty well, okay? And the costumes were great. Like, the animatronic faces and the um, sound editing was fantastic. And the fact that they had these people doing, I mean, really legitimate martial arts stuff in these crazy suits. I mean, they must have been working blind. But, like, what they accomplished was fantastic. And I really feel that, you know, in this day and age, it kind of slips under the radar. I have not seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows, but I have seen the first one of the new Ninja Turtles, and while it is not bad, like, it is, you know, it's CG. You can do a lot more with CG for a lot less and with a lot less effort. Like, these were human beings in turtle outfits doing all this crazy shit. I get it, you know, like, the whole idea of the Foot Clan, like, they were robots in the cartoon, and they're real people here, okay? And in this movie, they are teenagers. The Shredder is using teenagers. And there's scenes of, like, kids smoking, and, like, the whole underground abandoned factory that is the hideout of the Foot Clan. You know, there are kids gambling and doing all this shit, and the, the whole atmosphere of the movie is, like, really dark and gritty. But I will say this. Okay, the Ninja Turtles, yes, it was a cartoon and it was a cartoon for kids, but it was also a comic book, okay, and it started out as a comic book, right, and really when you think about it, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, okay, they're superheroes, I mean, that's essentially what they are, you know, and it's like, you don't really have to suspend much disbelief if you are a fan of the Ninja Turtles than you do to say that a man is impervious to bullets or, you know, like can live forever or can breathe underwater or can fly. The Ninja Turtles do not, like, insult the genre at all. And the thing that I really like about the 1990 version is it was dark and gritty. It was treated like an actual story. It really was. You know, and there was comedy in it, there was. The Ninja Turtles were very well represented, and, like, the dialogue between all of them was very well done. Like, the Shredder is really scary. He is. And the whole story, the backstory, you know, Iroku Saki, I'm not going to get into it because I don't want to spoil anything for the review. But it was, like, a very poignant, like, martial arts movie, but, like, with kind of, like, a superhero spin and with a little bit of comedy thrown in. It is a very, very unique movie. And the sequels, gradually as the series went on, they made it 
a lot more like kid friendly. And it's like, while parents even today might be like, well, I don't think that it's appropriate to show a kid smoking a cigarette. It's like, okay, that's fine. But it's like, this movie had a moral to it. It did. It didn't portray all these things as being good. It didn't portray all these things as being like, hey, these are your role models. It's like, no, these are the bad guys. Okay? These are the people that the Ninja Turtles are fighting against. Okay, these are these are like teenagers that have lost their way, and the Shredder is using them. Like Splinter literally says that he uses you. He cares nothing for you or the people that you hurt. The movie has a moral to it. So the fact that it's a little bit rough, a little bit gritty, that's totally excusable in my book. You know. It's good, and it also came from an era where parents actually knew how to personally teach their children right from wrong, you know? And it's like, with that sort of reinforcement, a movie like Ninja Turtles is great for kids. And the fact that it's a little scary, it's like, that's okay. I watched Ninja Turtles when I was in kindergarten. I'm not fucked up. Well, at least not that much. I'm not a serial killer or anything. Come on, man. Like, you know, and I, I feel like we need a little bit more of that in, like, today's film. Like, I think that kids nowadays, they need to get, like, they need to have a sense of peril. They need to be a little bit afraid. They need to, like, understand that, like, life is awesome, but it also has some aspects that are pretty fucking scary. Monster Squad, even, like, the Goonies. The fucking Goonies, it's regarded as a classic. Are you trying to fucking tell me that was just based on sloth alone that movie would have been rated PG-13 by today's standards, let alone Corey Feldman in the beginning talking in Spanish about how they keep the fucking heroin in the cupboard. What it is is, like, parents can't raise their own children anymore. They rely solely on media, and that's why, like, everything's watered down. But to me, that's a little bit more damaging because it's like when kids get out into the world, like, they experience it for what it is. And if they're not prepared for it, it's like a kick in the nuts they're more likely, honestly, to fall into, like, a bad situation. Needless to say, I think that 40% on Rotten Tomatoes for the original Ninja Turtles movie is fucking atrocious. I think it was a very clever, unique kind of movie. The likes of which we have not seen since its release in 1990. Anyways, uh, yeah, I wanted to go a little bit more in depth with that, and from here on out, I'm gonna try and avoid the whole Trilogy Tuesday franchise Friday bullshit. I'm gonna try to like respect every movie, sequel or not, like with an honest to God dignified video. And that's all she wrote.